What's up YouTube? How are y'all doing today? Today I am going to talk to y'all about Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and my battle with the disease. First, I'm going to explain to y'all what Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is. It is an infection or a disease caused by a wood tick. Well, like you know, there's deer ticks and dog ticks. This is a wood tick. A wood tick is bigger than the deer tick, which the deer tick causes Lyme disease. Lyme disease and Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever are two totally different things, though a lot of people uh, think that they are the same. They're not. Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is way more rare with less than 20,000 people in the United States infected with it each year and Lyme disease over 200,000 people uh, get that every year. Um, Rocky Mountain Spice Fever actually started in the Rocky Mountains but n now it's more found in the southern part of the U.S. Uh, Mexico, South America, places like that. Places where it's hot and humid and there's a lot of woods. Um, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever is a really serious disease if it's not caught in time it can it can lead to death um there's it's caused by this weird little microorganism called i'm gonna put it right here because i can't pronounce it um i'm not even gonna try because i butcher it every single time but it's caused by that and it can cause issues like encephalitis which is your brain swelling uh your lungs and your heart to swell uh it can cause serious infection and which could lead to amputations and worse uh, also it can cause kidney failure and worst case scenario death so you have as soon as you find out like you start getting your rash which actually a lot of people don't even get rashes when they get Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, so it makes it really hard for the doctors to diagnose it. But if you do have Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and you get a rash, it starts. It usually starts on your wrist and your ankles, but it can spread both ways, up your arms and your legs and down the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet. Um, that's how I pretty much figured out that's what I had. Uh, also, it's not itchy. It doesn't itch at all. And it's not filled with anything. It's not like pus or like blisters. It look it'll look kind of like blisters, but it's not a blister. Sorry, kind of got hit in the face by a box at Walmart earlier, and my ears been feeling kind of weird ever since. Anyways, um, so with Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, let's see. About two years ago, a little over two years ago, it was in the fall. Um, I started getting really sick. It started out like just a fever and me feeling nauseous every day. And then I started developing a rash. I went to the doctor. They gave me some cream and I went home like a couple days later. It just kept spreading and getting worse. And I was starting to feel really sick, like throwing up every day. I was running really high fevers. I lost a lot of weight. I had swelling in my legs, which is I ended up going back to the doctor because I had pitting edema in my legs. And the only other time I ever had that was when my thyroid went out and they thought I had congestive heart failure. Well, I go back to the doctor and they do a bunch of blood work and they're like, we can't find anything wrong with you. So I go home and I'm going to do my self-diagnosis. I go looking on the internet and the only thing that I could find, me and my husband, the only thing we could find that was even remotely close to any of my symptoms were Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. So I go back to the doctor and I'm like, this is what I think I have. And they were like, no, 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 we tested for that. That's not what it is. Blah, blah, blah. Here are antibiotics. Well, they didn't give me antibiotics. They just told me to go home. Well, I just started feeling worse and worse. My whole body was hurting. I got to where I couldn't even walk. I had to crawl up my stairs, down my hall every morning. When I got out of bed, it was like, Every joint in my body was just, say I was like the Tin Man, I was rusted pretty much. I couldn't bend my arms and my elbows. I couldn't stand up straight. I just, I already have arthritis as it is from several accidents. And that like amputat, amp, amp, you fly, amp, 
amplified it by like 50. It was horrible, excruciating pain. And I was staying in bed all the time. I went from 155 down to 125. I lost a lot of weight. I was throwing up all the time. But I wasn't able to use the bathroom. I couldn't, I could pee, but I couldn't do number two. And it was like two and a half months I went without being able to do number two, so my stomach swelled out really big. Even though I was still losing weight, I was still my stomach was swelling and my feet were swelling. So I go back to the doctor. They run more tests, and they're like, oh, well, your kidneys are shutting down. My kidneys are shutting down. They still don't know what's wrong with me. I go to a kidney specialist. I have to start taking all these pills and stuff. Then I'm like, well, I can't use the bathroom, so I had to go to... Uh, doctor and get, I had to get two colonoscopy, colonoscopies within two weeks of each other. And I'm going to tell you this, I would never do another colonoscopy again. That the procedure wasn't the hard part. Like I, when I woke up, it wasn't, I couldn't tell anything at all, you know, but it's the prep. The prep was probably worse then the Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever to begin with. Like, it was, ugh, I just can't do it. Uh, you know, drinking all that nasty shit, it was disgusting. So, uh, that was pretty much the only time I got to use the bathroom during those two and a half months. So, two and a half months go by. The doctors still haven't figured out what's wrong with me. I still have a rash. I still have a fever. Like, every day my head is pounding. I'm literally dying my body starting to shut down and one day I get a phone call from my doctor and she's like oh hi Miss Schmidt um we just wanted to tell you that uh you had we ran blood work and you had Rocky Mountain spotted fever did you know that and I'm like uh yeah I still have it I'm still suffering from the freaking symptoms like it, I, it was so bad. Like, I couldn't sweat. If I got hot, I felt like I had freaking ants, fire ants all over my body biting me. And it, it was just horrible. Like, so horrible. And so they called me in antibiotics. And they were like, well, usually people that don't get treated within a week, you know, die. I went two and a half months. They're like, you're, you're lucky. You're very lucky that you didn't die because, you know, most people have to be treated within a week or they'll die. So I guess I'm pretty strong because I didn't die. I just went through all that pain for so long. And then they get me on the antibiotics and I got better. But still to this day, I, I'm an outdoors person. I like going outside. I like working in my garden. I like doing stuff outdoors. But if I get too hot and I start sweating, that fire ant sensation comes back. And they said, you know, a lot of the symptoms will never go away. Like, my kidneys are okay. They're not shutting down anymore. But I still have issues with that. I still, to this day, have issues with constipation. And... I, you know, I don't know if that'll ever get better, ever. It sucks balls, like it really does. But I just wanted to come on here and tell y'all my story about how I got Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. And, yeah, I pray that you never get it. Or Lyme disease. Um, I think with Lyme disease, you can't eat bread meat for the rest of your life or some crap like that. I know a lot of people told me that. They were like, yeah, my dad got that and he's not allowed to eat red meat. But I haven't. I know issues with red meat. I've had several people tell me stuff like that. I think it's Lyme's disease that does that. But anyways, um, if you've ever had Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, I would love to hear from you and your battle story. Because I know it's just bad. And I haven't ever met anybody else that actually had Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Met a lot of people that have Lyme disease, not RMSF. So if you have had Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever... Give it a thumbs up. Comment in the section below. I'd like to meet you. And until next time, I love you guys. Peace.